ready to raise the maid? Yes. The maid has always been our slow step in getting ready for passages. Yeah, it takes a while to raise. How long do you think it'll take you to raise? Five minutes. All right, I'm gonna time you and see just how long it takes you to raise the main. Timer started now. So why does it take so long to raise the main, do you think? Just getting all the battens through the uh, jack lines. Four minutes and 45 seconds. You guessed pretty well. I guess I've done it enough times. <laughs> Not quite five minutes. You're improving your time. Just don't rush it. Meet Lab Mariner, our home in the water, and her crew. Anubis, the huntress. Jim, the captain. Mocha, the camera dog. Nuala, the greeter, and Stephanie, the cruise director. We just exited out the Sea of Abacos and are now in the Atlantic Ocean. We exited through the North Bar Channel. How deep do you think that water is? It's thousands of feet deep. It's amazing. Once we exited out the channel and into the Atlantic Ocean, it dropped off really quickly and you can tell it's thousands of feet below us because it's that beautiful dark blue color so we've got about a 56 nautical mile sail the sun is shining not too many clouds in the sky so it's going to be a beautiful day for sailing Patch to Luthra from the Abacos and one thing that we're going to do this time that seems a little risky is go through the Ridley Head Channel. Can you tell me a little bit about going through the Ridley Head Channel? Most channels you have to worry about the current and wave pattern and in this case the current and the wave pattern shouldn't be a problem at all going through this cut. Just how wide is the cut and is it something that we're going to have to be concerned about? In this case it's quite narrow. It is about 60 to 70 feet at least on the map, from coral head to coral head. So we need to take our 25 foot wide boat through a 60 to 70 foot gap, which leaves me a little anxious, but it should be quite doable. You get to be on the front of the boat uh, looking down. I get to be the lookout. And I will do my best to stay in between them. And we should be able to make it through without a problem. After entering Eleuthera through the Ridley Head Channel, we head to the Meeks Patch West Anchorage. Behind me is Meek's Patch, which is your Spanish Wells. Here tourists come to get their fill of swimming pigs. We woke up at about 5.30 this morning because the roosters were crowing and the dogs woke us up for food. But the tourists didn't start coming here until around 10. So it's been busy. The first 15 minutes we saw probably six boats. So it gets busy really quickly. The swimming pigs are a big business for tour operators here in the Bahamas. Tourists come to see the pigs at Meach Patch from Harbor Island, Spanish Wells, and even as far away as Nassau, as evidenced by the pieces of eight tour boats. It seems like these pig shows are happening on more and more islands as the demand to see these pigs increases. We see several caretakers come every day to clean the site and collect fees, but we've seen enough pigs and head to the west side of the island when we get the chance. The winds have changed, so we are now rounding the northern part of Meek's Patch, and we're going to the other side. The east side of Meek's Patch is much quieter, lacking the constant noise as tour boats come and go. There's also a nice beach on this side, which is free from pigs until early evening when the tour boats stop operating. What you doing there? Guys, what am I doing? I'm making my wife happy. That's what I'm doing. How's your apprentice doing? Pretty well. He's a little slow. We're one of those people now. One of those dog people that just can't get over themselves. Well, most people have all kinds of boat things. They label their boat. They label their 
hats, t-shirts. Hats, t-shirts. We're like way behind on the game. Lab wagon. Now it's official. It's the dog boat. While the pigs are busy with the tourists on the west side, we take this opportunity to get the dog some exercise on the nice beach on the east side. Happy to see me, Mr. Walla. Hi, baby. Sitting all pretty at Meek's Patch. I went over and checked out the pigs. You would not have wanted to see those pigs. They're big. They're much bigger than you are. They are big pigs. We're at the beach at Meek's Patch. Over this way is the way to the pigs. It seems like there's a lot of people over there feeding the pigs, so it's doubtful that the pigs will come over here, so we're okay with the dogs right now. Well, at Meek's Patch, we arranged for a pilot to aid us through the Devil's Backbone, an area riddled with coral heads at the northern end of Eleuthera, into the Harbor Island area. Captain Roberts, this is Lab Mariner. We're going to be there at 11, like we promised. Okay, we'll see each other. Thank you very much. So we have hired a captain to help us through the Devil's Backbone and into Harbor Island. Yes, we Think have. Think that was a good decision? There are numerous write-ups that there are by far more wrecked sailboats in Devil's Backbone than anywhere else in all of the Bahamas, bar none. So yes, I think it's worthwhile. It's good to play it safe. A lot of people can't read, can't read the waters. They can't, they can't tell whether where there's reef or whether there's grass. Okay. And that's, I think, the biggest problem. Oh, they see, they see a dark spot, yeah. and they think that's deep water. Right. But sometimes it's Ooh. a reef, you know. Yeah. And so you can really get yourself in trouble, you know, if you don't know, you don't know the water. I've been a commercial fisherman. Uh, I fished for 51 years commercially. Wow. I sailed three different boats. Um, but I, I started piloting. I guess about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. That sounds yeah. amazing. Piloting was just a natural, easy thing to just go and do yeah. with all your experience. Yeah, exactly. From the east side of Meek's Patch, it was about 13 nautical miles to the anchorage near Harbor Island. And after saying our goodbyes to Mr. Roberts, we settled in for the evening. We are anchored out right next to Harbor Island. And it is a beautiful day, totally glassy water. Jim's disturbing it by uh... bringing my wife along. <laughs> We're in Harbor Island. We just picked up our Lee Mi Fi, so we'll have lots of Wi Fi. Yeah, you'll be happy. <laughs> I know. And we have a couple other places we're going to, but I haven't been told where we're going to. Yep, you'll find Surprise. out. Stop number one was a welcome sign bottle opportunity for the dogs. I'm standing in front of the more craggy of the two trees. I do not believe this is Lone Tree. I believe the Lone Tree is the one that is still standing upright, but this is a beautiful tree in and of itself. I went out here without the dogs because the water right now is about knee deep. So it's a little high for the dogs to be walking around. I'm at the second of the two trees at Harbor Island. This one I believe is the official Lone Tree. Let's see if you can get the entire tree. There we go. We are on the pink sand beach. Do you know why it's a pink sand beach? Because if you look really hard, it looks pink. Slight pinkish hue from the pink shells that have disintegrated. If you look, you can see all the pink remains. It's really very lovely. It is a pretty beach. I want everybody to see what happens behind the scenes. She can film and she can hold a poop bag. I'll take the dogs. They have some coconut bread, so why don't you get that and plus something else, okay? All right. Arthur's is our favorite bakery in the Bahamas with a great selection of breads and other breakfast items. So, Jim, what did we pick up from Arthur's Bakery? Bakery goods? Like what? Uh, I don't know. You're the one that bought it. I asked you to go in and buy it. You're asking me what did we get. I know we got a drink. And it looks like we got some bread. Well, we got the 
coconut bread that you want. Okay, we got coconut bread. What and else did we get? And we also got jalapeno bread. Yeah. We had tried to make reservations for New Year's Eve here at Harbor Island at Equipaza. We stayed there before and we thought it was really good. So we tried and they were totally full when we called. So we're gonna end up making food here. I'm gonna make a pizza. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, that one's nice and brown. You wanted this one a little browner. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, here's the finished product. And according to Jim, and I will concur, it is quite delicious. How is it? It's delicious. Even bad pizza is good pizza, but this is delicious. All right. We are anchored between Valentine Maria and Ramora Bay Marina. And we're gonna go in tonight to get a little Italian food at Aqua Paza, which is part of Romora Bay Marina. And it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. And you can see behind me, we're gonna have a really lovely sunset tonight. It's starting. We watched the sunset at Romora Bay Marina, then headed up to Aqua Paza to enjoy a little dinner on New Year's Day. There's our boat all blinged out in front of us. So we just got back from eating at Aquapaza. We got to see our boat all beautifully blinged out and lit up when we got back, which was excellent. Yeah, it's very pretty uh, anchorage with all the boats around, uh, all lit up. Uh, Harbor Island is a, um, a high-end place for with, within the Bahamas. Yes, it was beautiful, and Aquapaza was, was, was very good. It was, it was nice. just as good as last year. Yes. I had a great time sitting out on the porch looking down onto the marina. Another short sail takes us to Man Island. We are heading to Man Island today. Man Island's a great starting point for a dinghy ride over to Tay Bay Beach in North Alufra. At Tay Bay Beach, we can access Preacher's Cave as well as Sapphire Blue Hole by a shortish walk. So onto a new adventure. What are you and Anubis fishing for? A squirrel. <laughs> You're fishing for squirrels? Lewis has asked me to fish for a squirrel. How's that going? So far only a remora. Luckily I was able to uh, make sure it didn't catch the bait since it's living underneath our hall. Got a long day right ahead of us. You ready? I am. Let's go. here at Tay Bay Beach, which is another pink sand beach. We have had to pull our dinghy up quite a bit because the waves are coming in pretty strong. Yeah, it worked pretty well with the back and forth and side to side and pulling it forward and then going around to the other side. And we were a very good team. We made a good team. So Jim, where are we? We are at Preacher's Cave. It's nice when there's signage that tells us where we are rather than having to guess. We are at Preacher's Cave, and the story behind this cave is that in 1682, a group of British settlers were shipwrecked in this area, the Devil's Backbone, and they ended up taking refuge in this cave. Goes back a ways. If you listen, you can hear the birds chirping. All right. Spot. There were a whole group of British settlers who took refuge in this cave. What do you think would, have, would be the hardest part about that? Finding water. Yeah. It would be very hard. Nice. You know it's popular when you see a dive at your own risk. That's pretty. You can see the reflection. There's Jim. And there's his reflection. What are you waiting for? So show me where you're going to jump from. I'm just going to jump from over there. Oh, that spot right there. Got it. How is it? It's cold.
opener. Did it make a big splash? It made a big splash. It's still misting over here. <laughs> so you're pretty with all the reflections. That's really far. How much further do you think it is than that one over there? You know it was easier? What? Not looking at the water when you when you jump. Just look here and jump. Okay. You'll hit it eventually. You need your audience? What? You need your audience? No, no. All right, I'm ready. Okay. It'd be much better, son. Good job, sweetie. That was spectacular. <laughs> was it? Yes, it actually was. Ooh, it makes a big flash over here. So that was blue hole number four. Yep. Did you have a favorite of the blue holes? Dean's because it was so deep and wide. This one because it's just so clear and out of the way and it's not, uh, not a lot of people come here. Hoffman, uh, just because it was a cool place to find it. And so I like them all. Yeah, they are all different in their own way. Yeah. My favorite is probably Hoffman's because it was our first. Oh. But I do really like this one. It's beautiful. Her favorites are always her first. Dingy looks good. We did a wonderful job pulling it way up. A little tricky getting the dinghy into the water as we coaxed it back and forth until we finally reached the water. And it was even trickier getting that dinghy back to the boat. Join us next week when we show you how we cook pizza on our boat grill. Because if you're not using your grill to cook pizza, you are really missing out.